this is something that I have been looking forward to doing. Not particularly just because it's a JAC, but because I've taken an interest to double cabs. Now maybe I'm a little bit late because if I look on the road, we have a double cab fetish in South Africa. Like we are crazy about double cabs for some reason. They're very impractical to park and all these different things, but there is definitely something to it. And that is what I'm trying to figure out here today. This is the JAC T9. It's a Chinese manufacturer. They've been in South Africa for a good couple of years now. I think it's since 2017, 2018. They are new kids on the block in that sense, if you compare them to the other brands over here. They are one of China's largest bus and commercial manufacturers. And that should give you peace of mind knowing that they know what they are doing. So stick with me for this journey to be able to see what this vehicle has to offer. And the reason why you probably turn this on is because you want to know a little bit more about the JSC. Here is my take and my review on the JSC T9. Walking around the JAC T9, you will see they've really upped their game. Big grill in the front, 18 inch alloys, roof rails, roll bar, everything to bring it in line with how Bucky's look today. They went with a bold and premium design. So the JAC T9 is powered by a two liter diesel engine. This engine is JAC's own engine and uh, it produces about 125 kilowatts, 410 Newton meters of torque, and it's mated to an eight speed ZF gearbox. The beautiful thing about this all is because of that ZF gearbox, it's focused a lot more on fuel efficiency while giving that great balance between a vehicle that has enough power to be able to, you know, carry this big tank along, this beast. The fuel consumption is rated at about 7.8 liters per 100 kilometers. I can say within my test experiences, bear in mind the car has only less than a thousand kilometers on the clock. Um, I've been averaging about 8.2 liters per 100 kilometers. So definitely that fuel consumption is most likely very, very achievable in this big vehicle. So you probably want to know how this car looks on the inside. Climb in with me. So what does it feel like jumping into the JAC T9? Well, I can say, just feeling every little bit over here, everything feels well put together. And well, it is a car that just has over 200 kilometers, but if things are put together from the get-go, they generally, if you look after them, wear well. However, only time will tell. You can see, using the silver trim, the black, huge displays, as well as an instrument cluster that's digital. They are definitely touching on the, the premium things. Eh? I can say they could have done a lot more on the instrument cluster to be able to give you a bit more information. So it's basically just fuel, trip A, um, distance to empty, as well as your kilometers and your speed and your revs, but you have to scroll through those things. Um, they could have done a little bit of a better implementation into that, but uh, that's just me nitpicking. Um, however, everything is within arm's reach. There are some automations over here, such as follow home headlights, auto lights, auto wipers that you can set up. It hasn't got any of those major drivers, such as lane keep assist and those things, but those are also things that, you know, it's more of a, a want than a need. But on the need side of things, lovely radio. Your aircon, I love the fact that it has hard buttons over here because I promise you fiddling through this system while trying to drive is almost as bad as you picking up your phone and working on it. And it does distract you because there's no hard buttons to be able to see you constantly need to look. So that means more eyes off the road when you're of course doing something over here. So my suggestion is set everything up, put your phone down and focus on your driving. And where driving is concerned, the vehicle actually drives very, very nice. This 2-litre diesel with this 8-speed ZF box, it goes quite nice. It doesn't really need much more to be desired for, except if you want a little bit more power. But this 2-litre diesel has a lot of go. And I think comfortably sitting four people in the back and even putting in a bit of a load, you're still going to be fine. Um, mirrors on either side, nice and big. Visibility all around fantastic. And also the mirror. The rear view mirror is, of course, the electrochromic mirror. If I said that right, if I didn't say that right, I'm putting the word over here. But it auto dims when it picks up light behind you, so no switches. And then um, with JSC, safety is definitely also on the, uh, you know, on top of the list because beside your driver and your passenger airbag, there are side airbags as well. So you can see more and more that brands are trying a lot more to be able to incorporate the safety, the premium, 
as well as the practical features in buckies. No more buckies, just, you know, a commercial thing to lug around people in the back or things that you need to move around, but also those nice to have comfort features that's integrated. And speaking of comfort features, down here is a cooler, two bottle holders, and enough ways to charge whatever you need to charge. So I think JSC is making up for the power that ESCOM takes away from us by giving us a 12 volt port, two charging ports in the front, wireless charging, another two USB ports at the back, as well as a plug. Take that ESCOM. And also in the front, if you have feeling a bit funky, there are, stand under correction, but 64 different lighting settings that you can have on the LED lights that shine inside here. And you can even go into the menu and you can choose if you want it to be static or pulse of the beat. You can have a bit of a jaw inside the JSC. Let's move on to the back. Climbing on into the back of the JSC. The beauty of having such a big double cab is legroom. Interior cabin space is definitely on the top side of things. Um, at the back, generally there's not much to talk about. But with JSC, another thing that they've really incorporated in here was the fact that they have airbags right around. So you have six airbags, the two in the front, on the side, so at least you and your occupants will feel safe inside this vehicle. Another thing also to mention is they've added ISO fix points. Overall view in the back, you're feeling nice and comfortable. There's bottle holders on either side, and if you're only two occupants, you also have a lovely armrest over here. And you'll be glad to know that each person has a three-point safety belt. So safety, definitely. Thumbs up for JAC. Let's move on to, not the boot, but the load bin. So moving around to the back for what makes a bucky a bucky. A load bin with a size of 1.5 meters by 1.5 meters across and about a half a meter deep. This load bin, fully lined, is ready to carry a thousand kilograms. And also, if you add the tow bar, you can do about 3,500 kilograms at the back. Considering this two liter engine, I'm sure that you would comfortably be able to tow and carry, not that at the same time, but definitely have enough to be able to move some things around. And um, from where I'm from, if you own a bucky, you're probably gonna be that person that's gonna be helping a lot of people cart a lot of things around. The only impractical part of a bucky, unfortunately, is the lack of boot space. So if you are gonna chuck a canopy on here, the roll bar will have to come off. So um, I'm not sure how it will affect the looks, but definitely that will add to the practical sense of the JAC T9. So it still fascinates me as to why we are so excited about buckies. Let me come on back and face you in this camera and ask the question again. Why are our South Africans so fascinated by buckies? Is it the aggressive design, the versatility, the robust good looks, or are we compensating for something else? Well, what I can say is, at this price point, insert brand name here of a hatchback, you definitely are getting comfort, safety, as well as the added versatility of a bucky. To let you know that you're probably getting a lot more for your buck. And um, with a brand that offers you a five-year, 100,000 kilometer service plan and warranty, you've got peace of mind knowing that for the next couple of years, you also won't be forking out that extra money to be able to service and maintain your car. So, I've now given you all the information about the JSC. It is up to you to take that information to help you decide on your next bucky. But I would also urge you to give them a call. All the details are in the description at the below. Give them a call, take it for a test drive, feel how it feels, and yeah, that's all that I can add. But if you would like to know a little bit more, there is a like button right over there at the bottom and the subscribe button somewhere also down here that you just need to press. It doesn't take that long because I will give you a driver's review of how this vehicle drives. So stay tuned and until next time.